Real Orange is next on your PBS station, KOCE. Coming up, a very special program celebrating a legend in Southern California broadcasting, our very own Ed Arnold. Tonight, we spotlight Ed and his 50 years of television magic. Stay with us. Real Orange on KOCE is made possible by the Orange County Register. And thanks for joining us once again. I'm Ann Police. And I'm Ed Arnold. Otherwise known as the man of the hour. Even though we are only on for a half hour, but we're here to celebrate your 50th anniversary in broadcasting. I'm an old dude. That's huh? right. Ed is not one to grab the spotlight, but tonight the spotlight is unavoidable. And Ed, tonight we have gathered friends, family, and co-workers from many parts of your life to celebrate this remarkable anniversary. We want to take this special opportunity to thank you for 50 years of broadcast magic. Now, in order to get things started, let's go back to the beginning. It all began with a passion for music. At the age of 14, Ed volunteered his time at KOSY Radio in Texarkana, helping them update their files from 78 RPM records to 45s. And eventually, uh, after a number of months, they thought, well, let's try to reach some of the teenagers in town. So they gave me a one-hour show called Rockin' with Eddie. And I was the only disc jockey in, in town, one of the few in the South, that was allowed to play what they call race records, the rhythm and blues, the Little Richards people like that. So. It was a really great start. Another guy getting his start back then was Elvis Presley. Ed says those early days with the King were rocking. Hey, here I was 14 years old and I had this 19-year-old uh, this guy coming to us from Memphis. They said, you're going to love this guy. Uh, they had Bob Neal was doing the promotion for him and uh, I heard the record. I loved it. I mean, boy, that's all right. Mama, I've never heard anybody like this uh, other than the, the rhythm and blues singers that I had a chance to play. And we booked him. We got him for just a few bucks uh, that first night, something like 40, around 40 bucks, and had him in several times. But it was always fun because he would come to the radio station and promote the show that would be taking place that evening. It was, it was wonderful. 14, 15 years old, dealing with someone that I knew would be successful, but never to the degree that he became successful. But Ed's early radio days in Texarkana came to an abrupt end. It was well-deserved. I got a little bit too big for my britches, and when I didn't show up one day for a shift, I thought it'd be easier for me to go uh, watch the local community college, at that time, JC football team, play up in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And while I was on my way up, somebody from an opposing radio station found out about it and called my boss. And the next morning when I got there, Walt Richardson says, you know, we, we really love you and, and uh, we care for you and all, but... Something like this can't be tolerated. A stint in the Marine Corps brought Ed Arnold to Southern California to stay. It was here he met Dixie Kepley, who would later become Mrs. Dixie Arnold. He worked at some Orange County radio stations, but decided to take television courses at Long Beach College, where he recorded this audition tape in hopes to land a job in television news. Good evening and welcome to the final report. Vice President Hubert Humphrey has returned from his two-week Seven Nation tour. I remember typing the resumes on the old typewriter, get, getting it ready and mailing it and, and spending money we did not have for postage to send all over the place. And luckily, luckily, no one, you know, no one really wanted him someplace else. They wanted him here in Southern California. And he's, so he got his start in television in Los Angeles and we were able to stay here. So I think it was God's plan that this was the place for us. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to, to do some stuff with a PBS station in L.A., amazingly enough, a fundraising auction. And a person from, from KTLA, Doug Finley, uh, saw me, liked me, and they had me in for an interview, and I started doing booth announcing. And then eventually that led to one night a week sports reporting, and then when the, the legendary Tom Harmon retired from nightly sports casting, I replaced him. 
and I stayed at KTLA until 1975. Ed's career flourished in Los Angeles, and he gained a reputation for excellence on and off the air. Uh, Ed Arnold is, uh, is just a wonderful, great sense of humor. And you know, if you lose your sense of humor in this business, you may as well quit. Um, Ed has a superb sense of humor. He's very knowledgeable about what he does, and uh, he prepares for his programs all the time, and I think that's essential. We really did what they today would call happy talk, but it really wasn't happy talk per se. It was an opportunity to get away from scripts and to interface with each other and put a little humanness to our newscast, and that's why we became number one like a bullet. We just we blew the locks off all the other stations, and, uh, and in no small part because of Ed Arnold and the good job he did with sports. Like, I always figured Walter Cronkite was the best example, the most trusted man in America. I'm not saying Ed and I were second and third. We were about 9900th and so on. But people believe what we said. And I think you develop an, a sense of credibility. It's going to make people tune you in. When you tuned in during the early days at KTLA, you never knew what might happen, like this clip from Steve Allen's The Allen Show. Ed was asked to serve as both Pat Sajak and Vanna White as celebrity guests Lucille Ball and others played what looks like a precursor to Wheel of Fortune. Okay, this time it's gonna be a book. Gary, we'll start with your team. <laughs> T. A T, you hit it right on the nose to start with. Phil. E. An E, you know you've got that one. It wasn't long before Ed became the celebrity guest. He began a career of volunteerism that few can match. Ed was elected president of the California JCs. He's donated countless hours to serve on the boards and MC events for the Special Olympics, March of Dimes, and countless other organizations. I knew him through Special Olympics because I had my own golf tournament for Special Olympics, and Ed became the MC for our event for many, many years and helped us raise a lot of money. And uh, he's just been so gracious in the community for all those years. When I got to Orange County, I was on the NCCJ board. And the interesting thing was it was a very pleasant board and everybody sat around and talked about doing a lot of good things. And, and the organization certainly did good things. Uh, one day uh, at a board meeting, Ed Arnold was there and he started pointing out to all of us how hard we weren't working and how much we weren't accomplishing and how people were saying they were going to do things and they weren't stepping up and people were saying they were going to give and they weren't stepping up. And it was about time that everybody lived up to their obligations. And I thought, whoa, what's with this guy? <laughs> Ed's covered every sport under the sun, even participating in a few, like getting behind the wheel at the Celebrity Race and Long Beach Grand Prix. But family always came first, especially when it came to Dean Arnold, Ed and Dixie's only child. When it came time for games, I was there. When Dean played Little League ball, I was there. I became the team mother on one occasion when there were no mothers that uh, were able to help out. And I would go, I'd leave the radio station, go over, or the television station, go to the field, rake it, watch the game, then go back to doing whatever I was doing. And then when he started playing basketball at Fountain Valley High School, I let the people at Channel 7 know that my priority was there. And they let me make some shifts off the 5 o'clock news had to do weekends and, and do some other shifts so I could be there for him. When it came to the real important things, truly important things, he was there. You know, my, my sporting events, Boy Scouts, um, school activities, he was always there for those. And it was usually evenings where, where he was gone. And, and on weekends when I would have games, he typically was working at night. So he'd be there for, for the game and then go and cover the, the football game, baseball game, whatever it was. So I, I never felt that void or anything. To other people, they might say, oh my goodness, he's hardly ever there. And there's, there's been many things you've missed out on, but there are so many more things that we have gained through what we have had together and what we've been through together that it's been a great life. It's been a wonderful existence. And it's been very different from what, what most people experience in a marriage and a family. It's been very different, but lots of fun and just a great experience. In 1999, Ed thought his run in broadcasting had finally come to an end when he signed off for the last time at KTLA. But then came a call from KOCE and, and a chance to work in Orange County. And joining us tonight for what we hope will be many, many nights to come, Ed Arnold. Welcome, Ed. Glad Thank to you have very you. much. I am just so honored to be a part of Real Arnold. I, I love what I'm doing, and right now I'm not thinking about 
retiring permanently, unless somebody decides that I should. But um, I enjoy it so much more than I enjoyed working in Los Angeles. I thought I was retired, and then a few months later, had an opportunity to meet uh, the folks here at KOCE, and it's been great. Love affair ever since. Well, that's it for the final report. Until tomorrow evening, this is Ed Arnold bidding you a good evening. Oh, you look young in those, Ed. <laughs> it's a long, you look great. long, long time ago. Uh, well, we're just getting started, mm, so let's I continue moving on. Many of us have the good fortune to know Ed Arnold, but do we really know him? Ed happens to be one of those complicated fellows who uh, defies a simple description, so we thought we would attempt to define some of the many facets that make up the one and only Ed Arnold. Ed Arnold, the man, the myth, the legend. Everyone thinks they know Ed, but getting to the heart of the matter, truly defining Ed, plays out a little like a really good crossword puzzle. E, an exemplary employee. Wherever he was employed, in all the years I've known him, he always exemplified representing that, that company in the highest degree of class, dignity, and character. D, down to earth. You learn about people from what other, how other people treat them, and he was just one of those people that nobody ever rolled their eyes or tried to avoid. He just, he was a classy, he's a classy person that uh, everybody, you know, he had the same kind of rapport with not only the, the executives in the business, but the players and the interns. A, always thinking of others. Over the years, you would think, well, maybe he'll just do this one event this year. Not only was it one event, it was almost every weekend and a lot of times, and for a lot of golf tournaments, for a lot of banquets and those kind of things. And he's, um, he's meant so much to so many people, and he's done so much good for the local community that he would be irreplaceable. There's nobody like him out there in the business. R, a real person. Ed's a real person, and I think when there's a real person that that is is talented and 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 stays in in a um, you know in an area and, ha and makes so many positive contacts over over the years, you have to have that longevity of success. And and he loves it. I think Ed really enjoys what he does. Um, you know whether he's uh, whether he's he's emceeing a cystic fibrosis uh, charity event or he's on on the on the station doing news. Uh, He's enjoyed everything he's done in his 50 years, and I think that's important for somebody to be able to do it that long and be that successful. N, never distracted. I was just always struck by how, how focused he always was. I mean, he would laugh and he would partake and he would do it, but he would always, always get the job done. Oh, one of a kind. It's so obviously, if you have a, such a long and close relationship, it um, changes you for the better. I'm a better person because of Ed Arnold. L, loved by all. And that's what makes him, you know, likable and people can trust. You know, a lot of times, you know, people will say things and, and you know, sort of get twisted around one way. And Ed's gonna be very fair and accurate. In fact, he'll even, Fix it even better. <laughs> Sounds better. Yeah, but that's it. He's a terrific guy. D. Definitely trustworthy. Ed Arnold is a rarity, a person who survives in this business that long. But Ed Arnold is a terrific human being, and it comes out in his work. I mean, the Ed Arnold you see on the air is the same Ed Arnold that, uh, you know, you can have a cup of coffee with after the newscast, and what you see is what you get. And the audience, has the ability to bind with an Ed Arnold. They feel good about it, they turn him on, they sit back, they trust him. This takes a lot of work, a lot of professionalism, and Ed's, Ed's got it, he's, he's the whole package. Uh, uh, I've, I've often said about Ed Arnold, you know, uh, well, the guy with your limited ability, you've really stayed in the business a long time, Ed. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Ed Arnold, his name says it all. Some of those pictures you wish and uh, were hidden a little bit deeper in the Arnold household. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm just so moved by this whole thing. And, and Harold was so right. 
uh, to do as well with such limited ability. And no. that, that, that's, <laughs> been, that's been the most honest statement I think some of them made. <laughs> not true, not true. But as most people understand, we edit most of these interviews, and some of the things people said about Ed didn't make it on the program. The following comments are good examples of statements that should not have made the final cut. I'm sorry, who, who Ed Arnold? Well, I first uh, was aware of uh, Ed, uh, my mom and dad, you know, when I was a little, little boy, about three years old, my mom and dad <clears throat> used to tell me about Ed, mainly my mom. You know, she said, boy, you know, if he was a little younger, I'd take a run at him. Ed Arnold. Well, let's see. I think I first met Ed way back in 1972. I was a kid. He was my idol. I'm much younger than Ed. I'm old, you know that? <laughs> oh, Ed Arnold. Oh, for crying out loud, Ed Arnold. I never looked at him as, as a handsome man, but when I met him, years later, I remember Ed saying, Hi, uh, Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm a handsome man. And I said, well, yes, you are. I really don't know Ed Arnold that well. He's a very generous man, you know. You know that every year he wants to donate $10,000 to the family of the unknown soldier? Truth is, if he, was, if he was a little younger, I would take a run at him. He was telling me a story during a commercial break, and I started laughing about the story he was telling. And then we get this countdown, 10, 9, 8, and I've got a very serious story I've got to read. And all I can see is Ed Arnold over there laughing in his hand, trying not to break me up, and we failed miserably. I, it was a terrible moment for me because this story did not warrant smiles or laughter, but thanks to my good friend Ed Arnold, that's what the audience got. I don't know anything that I could say was funny or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize Stu Nahan was so young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father Nahan. That's he's, right. What an, these, these some in, incredible people. Stu, uh, working with him and, and Harold, uh, it's too bad the late Jerry Dunphy uh, was not around for this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he probably thinks the same thing because <laughs> these are people that, that I cared so much about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's interesting to hear what they have to say. And uh, Bill, picking on me a little bit, Medley, yeah. can, Medley can do that and get by with it. Oh, yeah. Well, I assume you'll get back at him at some oh, point. I, I, I will. I believe that. All right. No matter who we spoke to, though, it became apparent that Ed's warm spirit reaches out to touch people everywhere he goes. Ed, we bring you wishes and greetings from some of your very special friends. Ed Arnold, this is your good friend Shaquille O'Neal saying congratulations. Just think about it. 50 years half a century of broadcasting, fiddling through papers, night after night, reporting the news, talking about this, talking about that. You know what, Ed? You're a legend in my book. I love you, I appreciate you, and congratulations. Peace. Ed, on behalf of your friends here at KTLA, congratulations. What a wonderful pleasure it was for me to be able to work with you all of those years. You're a great guy, you're a wonderful person, and you're an expert. I'll never forget when those early sports shows came on. You had four tape recorders working, getting the highlights of all the games. And then you went on the air that night with uh, so many details and wonderful scenes. It was just impossible that anyone could do it, but you did it. You've had a wonderful career, you're a wonderful person, and I'd like to say again, congratulations, Ed. It's been a great pleasure to know you. But me too, Eddie. Congratulations, Ed. 50 years of broadcasting. You know what? I think you're gonna make it. Ed, God loves you, and so do I. Ed, I would like to say on behalf of my father, Dr. Jerry Buss, and my entire family, I want to extend my gratitude to you for your invaluable time and effort that you have given the community of Southern California and the work that you've done for my favorite group, the Los Angeles Lakers Youth Foundation. And I still can't believe it's 50 years. You don't look a day over 35. And we love you and thank you for being a part of my life. Hi, Ed, it's Bill Medley. And, uh... I want to congratulate you, 50 years of uh, in this business. It's a long time, you're great at it, and I'm uh, very proud and privileged to uh, call you a friend. God bless you, brother. You know, 50 years, the only thing I can think of uh, will probably last that long and it's be as good as this is probably aged wine. And uh, terrific, you know, uh, Ed, and 
many more good years, good health and everything else. And God bless you. Dad, congratulations on 50 years of broadcasting starting way back in Texarkana at the studio. And uh, Jake and Luke, your grandsons are very proud of you too. Congratulations. On this night when they honor you for your 50th anniversary in this business, all I can say to you is you proved that you belong there. You merit and you deserve everything that they're saying about you. I'm glad I was along for part of your broadcasting life to absorb some of the things that we learned together. You've been a good friend throughout the years and I hope we'll be good friends for many, many more years to come. Congratulations, Ed. Ed, we've, uh, we've shared a lot over the years, a lot of triumphs, uh, you know, some, some uh, tragedies and, and some not achieving, but through it all, you've been a special friend. I, I've never heard anyone have a, a, a bad word to say about anything you've done in this business, and I think that's a tribute to you and how well you go about not only your business, but how well you've, you, uh, you go about your life and your daily business and, and your, your daily living. And it's been a pleasure to know you, and hopefully we're getting another 50 years out of this, Ed. It was always a pleasure to work with you. I miss you. I was looking at my old wedding video, and I love the things you said about me. Even though I paid you, I want my money back. It's been about seven years now, but Ed, all the luck in the world, man. You're one of the best guys. I still watch you. You're one of the best guys I've ever worked with. Good luck, man. Ed, congratulations on, on 50 years in broadcasting. And you should feel proud uh, that you were able to succeed for 50 years in such a competitive field. Uh, personally, I appreciate having known you since 1981, which is when I came to Southern California. I appreciate your uh, concern and your um, stability and, and constant uh, friendship. And of course, you bring a certain sense of class and, and professionalism to your business. And that's much appreciated you know, by me and the Los Angeles Lakers. Congratulations on 50 years, and, and we're hoping for many, many more. We're so grateful for your presence in this county and your presence on KOCE. We're grateful for the ethos that you offer to everybody in terms of service and doing good and committing to positive change. Congratulations for all the positive change you've made happen in your career. Hi there, Ed. Uh, it's Hal. And uh, I just want to say congratulations on your uh, 50th year in broadcasting. And I want to say what a pleasure it's been uh, through the years to work with you. And uh, I just want to wish you all the best for the future. As you can hear, the bells are ringing here at KTLA, as they have for so many years. And I hope you had fun here. I certainly did. And all I can say is it's an honor uh, to be congratulating you on 50 years in broadcasting. Ed Arnold, congratulations on 50 years in broadcasting. You're a pro's pro and a good friend. I was glad I was able to say a few words about you, Ed. You're a good man. And you know the Lasortas love you very, very much. So take care of yourself. We need you. Happy 50th anniversary. Broadcasting has had a wonderful gift. Congratulations, Ed Arnold, Eddie. All right, and in addition to the warm greetings, several people have joined us in studio this evening. They too have uh, very special gifts for Ed. We'd like to acknowledge them right now. Just a few who are uh, joining us this evening, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, the City of Cyprus, of course, Mayor Tim Keenan, a certificate of recognition from Congressman Ed Royce's office, the County of Orange, Orange County Fire Authority, and of course Mel Rogers, the president of KOCE, has a special recognition for you as well. That does it for this edition of Real Orange. Thank you so much for watching us and congratulations to Ed on 50 years in broadcasting. How did they keep it away? I wish I could say something, but I can't. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? Best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. Come the day you're mine. I'm going to teach you to fly. We've only tasted the wine We're gonna drain the cup 
dry Wait till your charms are ripe For these arms to surround You think you've flown before But baby, you ain't left the ground Wait till you lock in my embrace Wait till I draw you near Wait till you see that sunshine place Ain't nothing like it here The best is yet to come And babe, won't it be fun? I love you. Oh, thank the best you. is yet <laughs> to come, come the day you're mine. Come the day you're mine. Not a kiss. And you're I gonna you. be mine. Very much. Oh, my goodness. This edition of Real Orange has been made possible by the Orange County Register.